So parents who choose spouses over their their kids. Now, they might, so there's parents like moms, let's say, or dads, moms or dads, they might just choose the, the, the spouse over their kids in little minor altercations. There might be something called dumb argument. So the mom has got a new husband or the dad has got a new wife and the new spouse, wife or husband, whatever, whatever, has moved into the house. For whatever reason, the youth's biological mom or father is not in the picture or they don't live in that house. Anyway, the parent, either the mom gets a new husband or the dad gets a new wife or just a boyfriend or girlfriend. Don't have to be a marital thing or whatever. Don't have to be technical like that. So um, there's parents who choose the spouse over the kid and that. But it might just be something minor, like an argument and that. But sometimes the thing progresses and that. I know a man, he, his mum got married and they lived in a two-bed house. This is around the corner from man's mum's yard. They lived in a two-bed house. The mum got married to some man. And the son is of an age where maybe he should be moving out. He shouldn't be living at home. He's all 20-something, whatever, isn't it? The man has moved into the guy who I know's house. Yeah, so the man has moved into his wife's house. And the man has a daughter. His daughter used to live with him. Well, he lives with him. So obviously if he moves, then the daughter has to follow him more because obviously she lives with him, isn't it? So he's moved into his wife, his new wife's house, which is dumb. Yeah, you don't move into no fucking woman's house. You're a grown ass mate. You're supposed to own your own fucking place. Man, then don't move into no girl's yard. Don't even mortgage no yard with no gap. Yeah, get your own things. Yeah. Anyway, a man's dumb enough to move in with a woman. So anyway, he's moved into his, his woman's house, his wife's house. And the son who's been living there since day dot, day dot one, the son has been living there since day dot one. He's lost his room because the guy's daughter needs a room. So the son has to go and sleep on a sofa downstairs. That ain't right. That ain't fucking right. How the fuck are you? I'm not saying women just do it. Men will do dumbness like that as well. So imagine if that happened to me. I'm living in my yard with my mum. It's always been me and my mum. My mum gets married. And her new husband has a you. He probably has left the council house to move into my mum's house because my mum owns the property. That's the situation. I've been here since day dot. That's always been my room from day one. But now I have to give up my room because this single dad needs a room for his child. So I have to go downstairs and sleep on the sofa. I don't give a fuck if I'm at an age where I should be moving now. A man's only in his 20s and now. A man's not exactly 40 years old. A man should not be dealt with like that. Especially if a man, obviously, I don't know if the man was on the right path saving not to buy a property. I don't know how, you know, I can't defend a man too much. But still, that should not happen. You're getting evicted from your room because a new man has stepped in the yard and he brought his baggage along with him. Literally, he brought his baggage along with him. He needs a storage place for his you. And that storage place is your room. You've got to go downstairs, man. Uh, so anyway, I was working. Um, yeah, this next one, I was working at, um, on this contract in Northampton. And, and I met some white girl. Um, she lives near the town centre or whatever, isn't it? So anyway, I phoned, because when I get the tenants' numbers and that, I phone them first to say, yeah, boom, it's the electrician, I'm coming. It'll be like 30 minutes or something, isn't it? So anyway, she's like, yeah, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at the house. I'm just here um, house-sitting or whatever. And so boom, I've gone there now. And I'm walking around in the house. She's showing me around the house. And she said, oh, um, yeah, my dad has gone out or whatever, isn't it? Yeah, but... Um, yeah, he ain't gonna be back till later or whatever. Just make a conversation or whatever, innit? 
So I'm like, oh, okay. So this is your, so hold on a minute. These little boys here are your little brothers. So she was looking after the little boys as well. So she was babysitting and house sitting. So she's like, yeah, these are my brothers or whatever, innit? Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So obviously she said, yeah, it's her dad's house, whatever, innit? Yeah. Then she went on to say like, yeah, this is her family house. So she grew up in this house, whatever, innit? Cool. So anyway, we're chatting now. And she said to me, she don't have a job. Remember, this girl's like 20 something. She don't have a job. And so obviously she's unemployed and she has no way to live. Because I said to her, oh, um, if you live in a council flat or council house, then you're going to have this done. So look out for my company's logo when you get the letter. She was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't live in a council house. She was like, oh, I, live, I, I don't even have a house. I sleep on people's sofa. She said she's sofa hopping at the moment, you know. I was like, rah. And obviously it was her family house that she grew up in that we was in. So I'm walking around this house and there's literally a spare room that she could have. But I know there's some issue with that girl and the new wife because the way she spoke about the new wife, she didn't say anything mad or bad, but I can tell that there's an issue with the, the daughter who live and, lived and grew up in the house and the new wife. Now obviously my name get down to the details or nothing like that, but I knew there's a reason because of how the fuck like, it's just mad that a man could have a daughter that's sleeping on people's sofas, but there's a spare room in the house that she grew up in, but she can't have that spare room, or at least fucking occupy the sofa in the house that she grew up in. There's some issue with the girl, the daughter of the man, and this new wife that's moved in. Obviously, what, I don't know on it, but that just reminded me like, of the situation with the youth that I said had to be relegated to the sofa and that. There's parents who would choose the spouse over the fucking kids, which is wrong. Nah, man, your youths come first. Your youths come first. But that's what happens. People love is blind. Love is blind, man. And if you thought that was bad, so you got men who have been kicked out of their bedroom and have to go and sleep downstairs on the sofa, you got a chick that I just mentioned who is sleeping on other people's sofas and different like friends' houses and that because they can't live at their parents' house for some mad issue with the the stepmom or whatever, isn't it? The mom, the dad's new wife. You know, and this is a dark one as well, isn't it? This is the maddest thing ever. The maddest thing ever. Let me get rid of my, my thing on this part. So you got parents who obviously they put their spouse, their new wife, their new husband, whatever, whatever, in front of the kid. They'll prioritize the the new wife or husband, whatever in it. Yeah. You know, there are some women in this world, and this is the saddest, maddest thing ever. There are some women in this world, they will get a new husband or new boyfriend. Don't even have to be official like that. New boyfriend, new husband, whatever in it. They will know that that new boyfriend or new husband is sexually abusing their daughter, her daughter. Yeah. They will know that this new boyfriend, this new husband is sexually abusing her daughter. She might not have seen nothing, but she knows. She knows something ain't right. Man shouldn't be walking out of the room at two in the morning. Man's hearing, I don't even want to say, you understand? Man, not even, you know, yeah, I ain't even want to say, yeah, you fill in the blanks. I ain't even want to say what I need to say, but man's here, she's hearing certain things in the night that I ain't even going to say, but she ain't addressing it. But she knows. You, you, you saw that guy come out of that room at inappropriate times of the night. You didn't say nothing. There are women out here who will have boyfriends and or husbands who sexually abuse their daughters and they don't say nothing because they don't want to lose the man for whatever reason, because they love him or if shit hits the fan, he's the breadwinner and they're living some fantastic lifestyle. 
or a better lifestyle that they had when the man wasn't in the picture. So you know what they'll do? They won't say nothing. They won't say nothing. Trust me. There's bare girls out here. They get abused by their stepdad, whether it's the mum's boyfriend is a stepdad or a husband, whatever in it. But the man in the house who's not their dad sexually abuses them and the mum don't say nothing. Maybe she's scared that the guy is going to retaliate on her or he's going to leave. Whatever. Who gives a fuck, blood? Ain't your youth safety more important than this man? You're telling me you wouldn't rather live in a shed where your daughter's safe over living in a, a seemingly safe environment with a man that's going to be abusing your daughter. You mad. You lost your fucking mind, bro. Man, forget bun for that. You know what I said earlier about you yeah, ain't trying to incite no violence. Uh, yeah, man, forget you forget bun for that. You forget bun for that. You forget gunshot for that. I don't give a fuck. They can cancel my my YouTube channel. I don't give a fuck. You forget bun for that. You forget gunshot. You forget gunshot, blood. You forget gunshot. But yeah, there's mums out here who. They have a husband or new boyfriend, whatever, and he is interfering with the daughter. It's not his. Don't even matter. I don't give a fuck. Who? Anyway, he's interfering with the daughter. And she don't say no. She said a blind eye. But you saw, you saw that man come out of that room at one, two in the morning. What are you doing in there? What are you doing? What are you even doing in her, in her room? Or you heard, you, you, you heard him leave your bedroom at one, two in the morning and he didn't go to the toilet and he didn't go down the stairs, but he went into the other room on the, the landing and the only other room on the landing is your daughter's room and he didn't come out there for 30 minutes. What was he doing? There's women out here in that situation. It's mad, madness. If women out here, they know that the boyfriend, the husband, whatever, 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 is sexually abusing the daughter, but they don't do nothing about it because they don't want to lose the man. They don't want to lose the lifestyle. But we should be willing to be like the fucking man out of pursuit of happiness, living a fucking toilet cubicle with your youth to keep your youth safe out of harm's way. There's plenty of danger out on the streets which you can't control, but you're supposed to be able to control the yard and who comes in and out and how safe the, the house is. One of the worst things is to be in danger in your own house. Your house is supposed to be a safe haven. Your house is supposed to be like your underground bunker where you go to where there's no trouble or no danger. <laughs> imagine, imagine being in your house and you, you're at danger. That's madness. That's mad. So my advice to any women who have daughters, if you have, if you, if you, as a woman, single mom watching this right now, whatever, it? Yeah. if you have a daughter, if you want to have a boyfriend, fine, but don't make him come over to the house. Yeah. And you might say, oh, well, so just because I'm a single mom, whatever, in it, yeah, I'm not allowed to have a boyfriend or whatever, in it. Yeah. Well, this is the price you pay. Yeah, for picking the wrong man. Now, sometimes women do pick the right men and things, you know, don't go. But you know what? Until your daughter reaches a certain age, possibly, 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 I'd say don't bring any men to your house like that. If you want to have a boyfriend, go, go to his house. Go check him at his house. Don't let a man move into your house. Always make sure. And if a man is in your house... Always make sure that the man is you're supervising your daughter when, when the man's around or whatever. Trust me. The bear stories out there, trust me, man read a lot. Um, sorry, I don't read, I don't read that. I, I told you the man don't read, never read a book before. A man watch a lot of stuff. Man hear a lot of stories from people that man's know and you get me. I remember hearing stories when man's a you and that and get me when I'm older and stuff. Man chat to bear people, man know, man see things on TV. 
So yeah, man, that's well. That I was gonna say that is the worst form of bad pairing. That's the second worst form of bad pairing. Um, the worst form of bad pairing is obviously like when parents obviously sexually abuse them abuse physically abuse neglect their own children i read that story about the baby pee thing um the other day on on facebook and it was mad it was mad it was mad just 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 if, if you want after this i'm coming off this is the last bit i'm actually coming off in like five ten minutes just type in baby pee and because i remember that because that was in like 07 and I remember I worked for Home Saharangi a few years later, like in 011, 012, that's when I started. It started in November 011, but yeah, anyway, got into it in 2012 properly. And yeah, a couple of men was talking about baby pee and that. And it was only, that was back in 2012, nine years later, a couple of months ago, man's reading the story about baby pee. Obviously, man's heard the rumors and shit like that, but I never read about it. And it was mad the way they tortured this boy. Like an old piece of meat get get treated better than that you, bro. The maddest part of the story, to me, obviously they murdered the kid, but the cruelest part of the story is basically there was one point that like just stuck out in my mind. I actually made Nadia read it, and I sat here in silence, and I made her read it, and I was like, "There's one mad part, yeah, but I want to see if you." And she was like, "Yeah, that part was mad still." Basically, they, they took the you. Well, let me just put some respect on the baby's name. They took the baby. I'm gonna call the you a you. I'm gonna call the baby Pierre. They took the baby to the um, uh, the doctors, and in the report, after all this has happened, they said, "Oh, at the time when they took the baby to the the doctors, the baby was more than likely paralyzed." They think that. They broke the baby's back over either somebody's knee or a cot. How can you how can you break a baby's back? You know, like when you use a U and you go out and, and you pick up twigs off the floor and you snap them over your knee. That's that's what someone done to a baby, you know. You forget gunshot for that. See, you forget bun for that still. You forget bun for that, bro. You forget bun for that. I wouldn't. I ain't got no enemies right now who I'd want to break their back. And these are grown men. I, I as a big man, ain't got no enemies right now that I would want to break their their back over my knee, over a fuck it, or over over a table. And I'm a grown man. They're a grown man. So how the fuck can you do that to a baby? You forget bun for that. You forget bun for that. But yeah, man. Yeah, that's it, man. The, the second worst form of bad parenting ever is the women that allow their, their daughters to get sexually abused and they don't say nothing and they know full well. You knew. You know, you knew what was going on in that bedroom. You saw or you heard. But you said, you know what? I'm going to go back to bed and pretend that I slept and lied to myself because I don't want no turbulence between me and my spouse because I don't want to have to get rid of this person. So, you know, I'm going to pretend I didn't see nothing. I ain't even going to mention that to my daughter. I don't even want her to tell me whatever. But you know, you, you know what you heard and you know what you saw. Let me say now. So that's the second worst form of bad parent in a woman who don't, uh, stand up for her daughter when she's getting sexually abused or she allows it to happen or whatever. You know a situation like that? You know the, the mum will get as much time as the paedophile? Yeah, and too right you should as well because you knew you had a chance to put a stop to it. That's the second worst form of bad parenting and the first worst form of bad parenting is parents who sexually abuse, abuse and kill their own children. How can you kill your own? How can you kill your own?